I've heard a lot of rumors lately that DC Comics might be in trouble. There's also rumors that AT&T does want to get into publishing business, and we heard that Disney might buy them out. Could you see Marvel picking up DC Comics, or do you think DC will keep what they have? How do you see this playing out? Do you think there's anything to this rumor? Ben, we're going to go ahead and start with you. Sure. Um, man, you know what? Since I opened the store uh, just a couple years ago, I've heard this pretty much since day one. Um, will it ever happen? Maybe. I mean, anything's possible, right? I don't see it happening anytime soon. And if anything like that does happen, uh, it's up to DC. Um, Marvel will purchase any, and uh, Disney for that matter, will purchase anything that people will let them purchase. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously it's, it's in DC's hands and I think they're trying to make one good last ditch effort. Um, I've heard some rumors that this 5G that they've got going on with this next generation um, may or may not happen. Uh, I think they are going to try their best to make it happen. Um, if that was to fall on its face, I think maybe that might be their last, you know, hurrah. But, I mean, they've been doing some good things lately. I mean, you look at Punchline, they've been trying to put something to, to juice this market up. And uh, I think we have – I think Punchline is just the start of – some things to come. So we'll see, I guess. So one thing also you always hear a lot, especially you in a bunch of different businesses, you often hear too big to fail. Mm. Nico, what are your thoughts on this whole process? I think it's kind of silly. It's about um, as probable as uh, when someone makes a, a joke about, you know, Bob's going to steal your girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> Warner media is too big. Uh, to be concerned with selling uh, the publishing rights to uh, their cheapest creative venture, period. Uh, DC Comics operates as uh, both a built-in storyboard and focus group for future television and theatrical uh, projects. Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I think it's a lot of hot air. Yeah, I, I like what Nico just said because we brought that up before that, you know, I've heard multiple people within the comic book industry from various different publishers mention when they're dealing with Hollywood people and they're looking at like options for independent comics. Quite often what they hear is that the reality is the cheapest research and development out there is comic books. That's why optioning properties happens at such a frequency um, today. And that's also why I can't really picture Marvel or DC ever really worrying too much about the bottom line, as long as the companies are able to be efficient and stay afloat. I think that the end game of what they're doing, no pun intended, mm -hmm. is trying to release these, you know, blockbuster movies, um, and while Warner may have, you know, they may have had mixed success with that. I don't see the publishing side really pushing the needle. I think, and I also don't know where all this is coming from. We see, we see these rumors being kind of consistent that people hear that AT&T, but we haven't heard like an AT&T spokesman say that they're getting on the publishing business or we haven't heard any of that, that sort of talk. So um, sometimes I think it's, it's wishful thinking. It's fantasy booking like in wrestling. I agree. I think DC Comics is here to stay. I think if AT&T does want to be in the publishing business, I think they've done some bad hires. Maybe they should hire a person that can run DC Comics the way it should be run and get those publishing rights out there. I don't see DC hurting. I think from a fan base is hurting, but if you look at their sales figures, it seems to always be up there with the big two. I mean, you're always going to sell Batman comics. You're always going to sell Wonder Woman, Superman. Fans come and go. They might not like a storyline, but we've seen that with Marvel too. Like five years ago, it was different. People were loving Snyder's Batman run. They were hating a lot of the Marvel books, but now we're seeing a lot of Marvel fans and a lot of DC hate. And I don't think Disney's going to buy it. I think each time they swallow up a big business, they get more and more flack for it, for being that monopoly and owning stuff like that. I'm not, I have a master's in cybersecurity, not business admin, but I've listened to that Bob Iger CEO book because I don't like to read. I listen to the book. but And he was talking about how ultimately the last one, the Fox merger, was hard to get by. You saw Comcast almost come in and swoop it in. So if, I think if e AT&T does get rid of it, I don't think it's going to be Disney or Marvel that picks it up. And like we talked before, Jack, I think 
they might license those characters out for people to use them but ultimately warner brothers and dc or at&t will still own them yeah and but that's some people's argument is that then marvel would license those characters to use within their you know comic books and the publishing and and also it's fair to point out that a lot of people are pointing at this due to some of like the teases in the donny cates thor run and things like that um the dr manhattan of the buff uh the full watchman uh the doomsday clock stuff but it that's again um that's i think it, it's a wishful thinking besides we got john constantine on the panel right now down there in the lower corner with the shirt and tie on <laughs> I only wish I was that cool. Yeah, I like your guys' uh, take on this. I mean, as a business, uh, I mean, as long as something is, is getting you some sort of uh, publicity or like a free uh, think tank, I like that idea. Um, on the flip side, if the uh, overhead company is hurting, it's immediately going to be looking for, well, where can I save a buck? Um, and ultimately, if you know, DC, um, the publishing side of things has continued to be any sort of dead weight at all. It might be something they'll look at, but, you know, looking at it as an asset beyond just sheer dollars as a, uh, a free think tank, a free storyboard, uh, I absolutely see the value in that. Um, so looking at it at a business perspective, uh, it's a really good point. I wouldn't, something I don't think I would have thought of actually. Yeah, I'm kind of fascinated by um, Warner Media and DC Comics generally. Uh, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've told myself like multinational corporations don't lose money. Uh, they don't miss opportunities. It's just a matter of time before they turn it around and then DC streaming came and well, that didn't work. Um, you know, Suicide Squad, that didn't work. This new Harley movie, well, that didn't work. Uh, even when they do produce really quality content, right? Swamp Thing, canceled. Uh, the Harley animated series, nobody watches. Um, you know, so that kind of perplexes me. Uh, at the same time, I, I see people, uh, you know, who are not comic book people, for lack of a better description, uh, women particularly tell me that they loved Birds of Prey. It was their favorite movie, and I'm just like, what's happening? Uh, so I've not quite been able to... Um, really uh, grasp what's going on with uh, DC properties. Um, and and I, it, it appears to me that neither has Warner Media. So I'll be real interested to see what James Gunn does with the Suicide Squad uh, relaunch. I'm real, uh, real bullish on uh, those characters. The problem is nailing down who's who and what's what. Um, but I think nobody's paying attention to them. And uh, I, I believe in James Gunn. Uh, as much as I believe in Kevin Feige, I think that guy's got the magic touch. I've been a fan since Lollipop Chainsaw. That James Gunn hired me reminds me of what you see in the NFL when the guy gets cut and the division rival scoops him up. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I'm excited for James Gunn's Suicide Squad, that's for sure. 